Okay, today we're going to take a look at some, sketching some piecewise functions. Um, before we get started, let's uh, talk about what a piecewise function is. Um, piecewise functions are functions that are defined by more than one equation. In other words, they're going to be in pieces, and each piece will be defined by a certain equation. <clears throat> in my first example here, um, I have color-coded the different pieces of the function so that hopefully that when we go to sketch it, it's going to stand out a little bit more. All right, now before you get started, um, you might just want to take a look at the different pieces so that you kind of have in mind what you're going to be looking at. Um, right here we've got an x plus 1. Okay, if you're good with your family of functions, you should recognize plane x. All right, looks like slope-intercept form. We're going to have a straight line for this part right here. All right, now this one maybe a little harder for you to understand here. Um, you've got 3 if x equals negative 1. So in other words, when x is negative 1, y is 3, that blue portion is just going to end up being a dot. Um, and like I said, that probably would be the hardest out of the 3 if you're just glancing at it. The bottom part here is an x squared, and hopefully you should recognize an x squared being a parabola. So we probably won't see all of the parabola, but we're going to at least see a curved portion that's going to indicate we've got a parabola going on here. <clears throat> now these over here are your constraints on your x value. All right, what this is saying is, okay, I've got a parabola, but it's only if x is less than negative 1. So I only want the part of the parabola where x is less than negative 1. So these are the constraints on each of these pieces. All right, now, just about the easiest way to go about doing this, or at least an easy way that I think it is, um, I've got a starting point and a, starting, and a stopping point here for my line. And if I actually identify those two points, then I know it's going to be a straight line because I can look over here. I know it's a straight line and I can just connect those two points. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take when x is 0, I'm going to create an ordered pair. When x is 0, all right, what's my y? I'm going to take that, plug it back in. 0 plus 1 is going to give me a 1. All right, so right there, I will have a point 0, 1. All right, now when I go to put it on the graph, I am going to have to decide whether it's going to be an open dot or a closed dot. That symbol right there, less than or equal to, all right, indicating that this is part of the graph. It's included into my function, so I'm going to put a solid dot there. All right, now I'm going to come over here to my 3. I'm going to generate a point. All right, my x value is going to be 3. All right, when x is 3, plug it in here. 3 plus 1 is going to give me a 4 for my y value. So then I've got a point, 3, 4. All right, now, when I go to put it on the graph, I'm going to have to decide, is it going to be an open dot or a closed dot? Well, right there, x is less than 3. All right, so I do not want to include this point into my function, so it will be an open dot. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and in red for this portion, I'm going to put a closed dot at 0, 1. So 0, 1. Close dot at 3, 4. I'm going to put an open dot. All right, and I've already determined it's a straight line. There's my two dots. So I'm going to draw a straight line. Okay, not going to worry about how accurate, since I am just sketching. I'm not actually making an accurate graph here. I'm not going to necessarily check to make sure it's got a slope of 1. It's going to be close, but it's just a rough sketch. All right, now for that middle part, all right, we said that this is going to um, create a point when x is equal to negative 1. That's the only time when x is negative 1, then y is 3. All right, so it, that does make the ordered pair negative 1, 3, and it is a dot, so I can put a closed dot on the graph at negative 1, 3. So that's the only portion that is blue. <clears throat> Okay, now for this last point right here, I know I've got a parabola, all right, but I need to know, well, where's my parabola starting? What am I going to do? I'm going to create a point here that I've got to work with. So I'm going to let x be negative 1, and then I'm going to plug it in right there. Negative 1 squared would be a positive 1. So I've got going to have a dot at negative 1, 1. Now, is it going to be included? Is it not going to be included? Since it is a less than symbol right there, x is less than negative 1, it's going to be an open dot at that point right there. Okay, so I'm going to use my green marker and put an open dot at negative 1, 1. All right, now we know it's a parabola. Okay, so a parabola would be something 
you know, curvy that looks like this. All right. However, I want x is less than one, negative one. So I only want the part of the parabola that is over here to the left of negative one. All right. Now, what I don't want to do necessarily is I don't want to assume that that's my vertex and just kind of. I mean, I am sketching, but I want to be a little more accurate. Okay. If you um, recall, just a plain x squared graph would have a vertex at the origin. All right, so very precisely, it would be going up like this. So it will be curved, but not as in that's the origin. I want it less than negative one. So here's negative one. Okay, something along that lines for a rough sketch. But I want to make sure that I did not indicate that that would have been the vertex of that parabola. Okay, so rough sketch there. I've got three segments. All right, this line up here gives me the straight line in red with my closed dot and open dot on both sides. The blue part is just a dot. And then here is the parabola again with an open dot right here. So you can clearly see where the different individual pieces are coming from. <clears throat> Okay, now, totally separate from sketching the piecewise function. A lot of times they will ask you to evaluate a piecewise function. You can actually evaluate various function values for a piecewise function without having the graph at all. You would not need this graph to be able to evaluate these. Okay, now, um, just general function notation. If I want f of negative 5, okay, what would we normally do? We'd take negative 5, plug it into the function. Okay, but on a piecewise function, we've got three pieces. So where the heck do you plug it in at? All right, this is where these are x values that are being plugged in. So I need to look at my constraints on my x values. Where does negative 5 fit in these constraints? Okay, well, this one right here, x is less than negative 1. Negative 5 is less than negative 1, so obviously it fits this constraint. That tells me plug it into the x squared portion of this piecewise function. So negative 5 squared is 25. Okay, so as you can see, I did not need the graph at all. All right, <clears throat> plugging in 2 for an x value into the function. All right, again, come over here to my x values, find where 2 falls. 2 is within this constraint. It's in between 0 and 3, so that tells me I'm going to plug it in to the red portion there of that function. So 2 plus 1 is going to give me a 3. All right, 10, come up here. That's an x value of 10. Where does it fall? Okay, well, it's not less than negative 1. It doesn't equal negative 1, and it's not in between 0 and 3. I have no place to plug it in. All right, so if you're without the visual, that might throw you off. Oh, well, where do I plug it in at? Okay, let's now use the picture here. When x is 10, all right, rough estimate here. Let's just say 10 right here. When x is 10, where's the function? What y value does the function attain? Well, it doesn't. The function's not drawn from there, so it's not defined. The function is only defined to the left of negative 1, at negative 1, and from 0 to 3. All right, so when you cannot find a constraint to plug it into, that means the function is not defined for that value, so undefined. Okay, now that really doesn't have anything to do with sketching, but we thought I thought I'd throw that in there because you do need to know how to evaluate piecewise functions. All right, let's do a couple more sketches really quick here without the evaluating part. Okay, um, so on this particular piecewise function, I only have two pieces, and that's all right. Hopefully you recall that the absolute value of x is going to be a v. All right, here again, I probably am not going to need the entire part of the v. I might only need the left or the right. Okay, and then here, I have a single value for my y, but over here, x is going to run between 0 and 3, so hopefully you can kind of be thinking, oh, if my x varies from 0 to 3 and my y value stays at negative 1, I should have a horizontal line for this portion. All right, so before you start, that, that works out really good there. All right, now, <clears throat> on this, I would recommend doing the point method again. This is my x value of 0, so I'm going to generate a point. I'm going to take x equals 0. I'm going to plug it in right there. Absolute value of 0 is 0. All right, so at 0, 0, I am going to put my first dot. All right, now it says less than or equal to 0, so that means I'm going to need a closed dot at 0, 0. Okay, now absolute value would be a v. Okay, but my constraint is x is less than or equal to 0. 
All right, less than or equal to zero would be on this side of zero, so that means I'm only gonna need the left portion of that V. And here again, rough sketch, so I'm not gonna worry about the angle, I'm just gonna kinda indicate that it's going upward. <clears throat> okay, now, for the blue portion, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and generate two dots because it's gonna make it a little bit easier that way. For the zero right here, my X would be zero. All right, well, my Y is always negative one. So I've got a point at zero, negative one. All right, here, my X value is three. And again, Y is always a negative one. And so I've got a point at three, negative one. All right, I'm gonna have an open dot at zero, negative one because it's less than less than or equal to right here, so close dot there at my three, negative one. All right, let's go ahead and put a little mark down there for my negative one. Okay, so we said open dot at zero, negative one. All right, and then at three, negative one, we said closed dot. All right, horizontal line. The Y value is negative one throughout that entire thing. There's where I get my horizontal line from. So nice little sketch right there on that one. All right, for a third example. All right, again, we've got um, a parabola and a point again when X equals zero, then Y is two, and then another line, two X plus one. All right, and we only want this line for X is greater than zero. All right, so let's go generate some points here. When x is zero, plug zero in, zero squared's gonna give me a zero. So I'm gonna have a um, dot at zero, zero, and it's gonna be open because of that symbol right there. Okay, so open dot at zero, zero. All right, now this is a parabola and the vertex is at zero, zero, so that dot is actually my vertex to that. Now, my constraint is x has to be less than zero. Well, everything less than zero would be over here on the left-hand side, so then it'll go up like that. And here again, I'm not going to con be concerned with how wide or how narrow it is, just in the general area of a parabola. Okay, and then um, this right here, when x equals zero, only have one possibility for that, y is two, that forms the point zero, two. Okay, at zero, two, it's going to be a closed dot and included on the graph. So let's make a solid dot right there. All right, and for the last portion here, I'm gonna create the point. All right, X is zero. Now I'm gonna take zero, plug it in for X. Two times zero is zero, plus one more going to give me a 1. All right, that symbol greater than, x is greater than 0, means I'm going to have an open dot at 0, 1. Okay, so open dot at 0, 1. Okay, and this is a line, all right, and it has a y-intercept of 1, so right there's the y-intercept, but open dot because it's at 0, 1, it has x is greater than 0. All right, I am going to have a slope of 2, all right, which means it's going to go up and to the right, all right. If x is greater than 0, here's greater than 0, so everything to the right, I do not want anything to the left. I only want what is to the right. And it'll go on forever and ever and ever to the right. And here again, not really accurate. To, you know, I was not checking to make sure the slope is exactly 2. It's just a rough sketch. So it has a positive slope going to the right. All right, so three little examples of um, using a point system to sketch your piecewise functions. Um, thanks for watching, and if it helped you out, be sure to share with your friends. Thanks.